Pay close attention. The news you are about to see is fulfilling Bible prophecy. Welcome to YPN News, bringing you news that relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Yeshua Hawkins. We begin our report tonight with information from the U.S. government that we're on track to set a new weather record this year. The temperature in the lower 48 states so far is averaging 57 degrees, which is about 3 degrees above normal. Higher temperatures coupled with the lack of precipitation have created the second worst drought in our nation's history, superseded only by, you guessed it, the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. Wow. Now let me ask you a question. What is every subway commuter's worst nightmare? Being suddenly and senselessly pushed into the path of an oncoming train. In New York City, this has taken place not once, but twice this December. Pictures and video have been released by the NYPD in an effort to find the attacker of 58-year-old Han Ki Sok, a subway passenger who was on the crowded platform at the 49th Street Station. Mr. Han is seen on video involved in an argument with another man whose voice can be heard swearing loudly at him moments before he shoved him onto the tracks and into the path of an oncoming train. Now, witnesses said that Mr. Han tried to climb out of the rail bed, but it was too late. Plainclothes officers were walking the streets of Midtown, scanning the faces of pedestrians while the NYPD detectives set up a command post outside the train station and were mapping out every surveillance camera in the area, determined to isolate a clear image of the killer and to get a fix on where he was headed. The police are concerned that the suspect may be emotionally disturbed. So, they are urging anyone who may have information in this case to contact the NYPD immediately. Now, the second attack took place on the elevated platform of the number 7 train in Queens, where a woman was seen running out of the station quickly right after a man was pushed on the tracks and killed by an oncoming train. The suspect is described as a Hispanic woman in her 20s, about 5'5", wearing Nike sneakers and a ski jacket. Wow. As we continue our coverage today, the violence continues as the mayor of Chicago has reported 500 murders this year. Now that's up from 17% uh, from last year, and the last time Chicago had more than 500 homicides was in 2008. Mm -hmm. Now, also in Weld County, Colorado, four people are dead in a reported murder-suicide. Around 4 a.m., a dispatcher received a call, and what they heard on the phone was a woman screaming, No, no, no. Then they heard gunshots. Right after that, a man picked up the phone and said he was going to kill himself, and then the dispatcher heard gunshots again. One of the relatives of the victim said two of the women were sisters and she was shocked by the events. She said they were good girls and were responsible and I just can't believe this happened. Neighbors are saying the same thing, saying this is a very quiet mobile home park. In Topeka, Kansas, police have ended a standoff with the suspect accused of killing two police officers responding to a su suspicious vehicle call in a parking lot of a grocery store. A search was made for the suspect where they finally came upon a house where the suspect was thought to be hiding out. There was a brief exchange of gunfire, tear gas was thrown into the house, and one person was wounded in the chaos. Now who and what condition they're in is still unknown. We also uh, are going to go back to Abilene, Texas, which we recently made a report on some of the violence taking place there. Uh, just hours after Christmas Day, a man broke into the home of his ex-girlfriend's house and assaulted her. Now, the police are saying the woman, Wanda Taylor, then shot her estranged boyfriend, 30-year-old Ernest Gonzalez, out of self-defense. The police are saying Gonzalez tried to enter the home on Christmas Day, but fled when Taylor called 911. Now, breaking into the house a few hours later, he then assaulted her while her children, a 16-year-old and a newborn baby, were in the home also. 
Taylor reportedly shot Gonzalez as he fled the home only to be found in the front yard by police. He was then taken to Hendricks Medical Center where he died shortly thereafter. Wow, that's absolutely horrible. But now I'd like to turn the page a little bit and talk about a man named Yisrael Hawkins. Well, we know Yish Hawkins is Yahweh's last day's witness. He's never claimed to be a prophet. No, but so many things he says that he claims to find in the scriptures are coming to pass. And actually almost immediately after he says them. This is one of those things. Oh, now, Jeff, this uh, sermon was given... December 29th, 2012. And, and while Yisrael Hawkins was giving this sermon in Abilene, Texas, uh, the Senate in Washington, D.C. was actually in session. Now, approximately 16 minutes after Yisrael Hawkins finished speaking, the Associated Press came out with this article that we have a copy of right now mm -hmm. using the exact word that Yisrael Hawkins used in his sermon. Listen to this. And here's just an excerpt from the article in the first uh, paragraph. Senate leaders groped for a last-minute compromise to avoid middle-class tax increases. Groped. Their words using the exact word that Yisrael Hawkins just finished telling us the leaders were going to be doing in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. After he said it. After he said it. And, and wait a minute, Jeff. To top this off, this didn't take place just any time of the day. It didn't take place in the morning. It didn't take place in the evening. It took place at Noon day. Israel Hawkins just got finished reading this prophecy of what was going to be taking place in these last days. And this article came out showing that the United States Senate was doing this very thing, groping at noonday. Amazing. Coincidence? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Now, if you would like your copy of this sermon, you can call, write, or email the House of Yahweh. You can write them at the House of Yahweh, P.O. Box 2498. Abilene, Texas, 79604. Or you can call us at 1-800-613-9494. For any calls outside the United States, please call the number that's on your screen now. You can also email at info at Yahweh.com. And if you'd also like to uh, see the sermon right now, you don't have to wait in the mail or while you're waiting in the mail for your sermon, you can go to Yahweh.com and click on the sermon dated 12 29 2012 and watch it right there on the house of yahweh website so if there's anyone out there that is still doubting that yeshua hawkins is who he says he is you're going to want to watch that sermon and then go find that associated press article where they use the exact word that yeshua hawkins used in his sermon that's right prove it to yourself that yeshua hawkins is yahweh's last day's witness for all of us here at ypn news i'm katan alexander and i'm jeffrey heimerman Thank you for joining us.